Hello, podcast listeners. We know podcasts are a great way to catch up on a program that you may have missed on KSJE, and it's provided as a free service of this radio station. But you know, KSJE is now listener-supported, and so while you enjoy this podcast, we hope that you'll also take some time to join KSJE. You become a member today. It's quite easy to do. Just go to our website at ksje.com support and pick the level of support that best matches your budget. Thanks again for listening. Here's your podcast. KSJE is supported by San Juan Regional Medical Center, here to meet your urgent and emergent medical needs, whether they are COVID-19 related or not. Medical emergencies happen when you least expect them. Whether it's a stroke, heart attack, illness, or injury, San Juan Regional Medical Center's caregivers are here to provide care to you and your loved ones. Find out more online at sanjuanregional.com. Thirteen minutes past eight o'clock, Tuesday morning, June fifteenth. Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott Micklin. Thanks for tuning in. KSJE, 90.9 FM over the air, of course, here in San Juan County, 103.3 FM over the air in Durango, Colorado, and streaming everywhere on the planet, including your smart speaker from our website, ksje.com. Welcome also to our viewers who are watching this visual radio program. The video is streaming live this morning to the KSJE Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and our Twitter account. We are glad that you are with us this morning, everybody. Coming up in the next few moments, we're going to be talking about the reopening of New Mexico after COVID-19 and what it's going to take to get us there. I'll be joined by two state cabinet secretaries, and we're thrilled to have them with us this morning. From the New Mexico Department of Cultural Affairs, Secretary Deborah Garcia Griego will be joining us in just a moment. And from the Department of Agriculture, New Mexico Secretary Jeff Witte will be joining me as well this morning in just a few moments. So stay tuned for that. It's coming up very soon here on KSJE. Then later on this hour, as we always do on Tuesdays at 8.50 a.m., it's our Adopt a Pet Tuesday segment. We'll be showing you some of the animals available for adoption from the Farmington Regional Animal Shelter. That is coming up later on this hour on KSJE. Next hour, of course, it's Roving with the Arts, our classical music program here on KSJE. Mick Hess is going to be featuring music from Haydn and Mozart on the program today, so we hope you'll stay tuned to enjoy that coming up immediately following this program. Don't forget, of course, you can also connect with us on Instagram in addition to our Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter accounts. And let's talk about the weather, shall we? Outside right now, sunshine, 70 degrees already this morning in uh, Farmington. Outside our studios here at San Juan College, we are expecting another hot day today. That heat advisory is still in effect. Mostly sunny skies, 101 uh, for a high temperature today in Farmington, 64 overnight tonight, 101 again tomorrow with an overnight low of 67 on Wednesday night with maybe a scattered shower popping up. More chances for a scattered shower and a bit cooler on Thursday with a high of 97 and a low of 67. And then partly sunny skies for Friday and Saturday with highs in the mid-90s and overnight lows in the 60s. Well, let me get to my guests who have been patiently waiting for me to stop talking this morning. And as I mentioned, we are thrilled to have them uh, on the program this morning. Joining me via Zoom, two of the state's cabinet secretaries, again from the Department of Culture. Affairs. Secretary Deborah Garcia Griego is joining us this morning. Secretary, good morning. Good to have you with us. Good morning, sir. Thank you for having me with you. You bet. Thank you very much. Also joining us is, as I mentioned, the Secretary of the Department of Agriculture, Jeff Woody. Good morning to you. Good morning, Scott. How's it going out there? It's going well. Thank you very much. Good to have you with us as well, both of you. And so um, let's start talking about uh, this Coming out of COVID-19, the state certainly has been very um, proactive in getting the word out of what it's going to take, that 60% uh, fully vaccination rate for state residents, and, uh, and that's what we're looking for, correct? Secretary uh, Garcia Grego, let me start with you. That's correct. To get to that July 1 reopening, the magic number is 60% fully vaccinated. Uh, we are very close. As of last night, we were at 57.9% uh, with about 36,000 individuals that still needed to be vaccinated, either get their first Johnson & Johnson shot or go back in to get that second booster shot. And with that number, we will be set for reopening. 
Right, and uh, I pulled the numbers from San Juan County this morning from the state's vaccination dashboard, and uh, it looks like San Juan County has has reached that 60% level, so go us. Um, we want the rest of the state to join us, though. We're at 61.2% according to the uh, the dashboard, so, um, so that's great work here, but of course we need to bring the rest of the state along with us. Exactly. Everybody, everybody has a role to play. Great work to San Juan County. Congratulations. But, you know, I think what Secretary Whitty and I are here to do is just encourage anyone that's maybe been delaying or holding off or perhaps even wanting that one dose Johnson and Johnson. You know, now is the time to step up and do it. And the state has got some great incentives, um, both to reward those who have already been vaccinated, but also importantly, to encourage us to get over that finish line with folks who have been delayed. Indeed. Secretary Woody, let me bring you into the conversation as well, because I know that's part of your your message, too. Um, the state has pulled out some other incentives, I guess would be the word to use, to maybe get folks maybe off the fence to uh, roll up their sleeves and, uh, and get the vaccine to help us get to that 60 percent uh, level, correct? That's right. You know, this is a great opportunity for the state of New Mexico and our, and our New Mexicans who have been watching and, and basically waiting for the data or for whatever reason. But now you've got a further incentive. Go get the Johnson & Johnson shot this week by Thursday and you can receive a $100 bill. Crisp, brand new $100 bill, fresh off the press, so to speak. And, and then if you're not in a, an area where they've got the $100 bills, they'll send one to your house. But it's, it's just an incentive to get people to thinking and, and get us over that finish line. We've got a lot of great opportunities ahead of us. And, and I think, you know, we're so close. Get your second. If you've got that first shot, get the boost. Get the second shot. Get, a, get it done. And, and, and I can tell you, you know, my daughter did a, one of those talking points uh, on, the, on the COVID vaccine. She's a nursing student. She has seen in her clinicals the impacts of COVID. The shot will keep you from having to experience that. Very good. Well, and I appreciate that. And Secretary Woody, I don't want to put you on the spot, but is that part of the job of being the Agriculture Secretary to have a rooster in the background when you're talking to me? <laughs> you know, I, I, during COVID, we've been everybody's been working remotely, and, <laughs> and I uh, set up a my office in my barn. Good so for you. Periodically, my roosters come by and check it out. It's a great effect, <laughs> and it's real, and I appreciate that. But thank you, sir, very, very much. Um, and that is a great point about these other incentives. That one hundred dollars is is just this week as I understand it correct and until until Thursday so folks have to make an appointment and uh, and get the vaccination by Thursday for this extra $100 uh, incentive from the state correct yeah that, that's right because Thursday's our magic day Thursday gets us two weeks before July 1st which means the states anybody who gets the vaccine this week will be fully protected uh, on July 1st with the two-week waiting period so you know the time is now the time is now. Let's think about all of the good times ahead that are that are coming. We got summer coming on. We got fairs. You know, a lot of our kids missed the fairs last year. They they had some livestock shows, but they missed the fair experience. This is our opportunity to to make sure we have that opportunity for our kids, not only at the fairs, but all the other summer activities and then this following school year. This is it. The time is now. Well, and that was one of the questions I wanted to ask you, Secretary Whitty, was about the county fairs that, of course, are a big deal across much of our state, including here in San Juan County. Um, and you're right. You know, it was, we didn't have a full-fledged fair last year, but all things being positive, we're hopeful that uh, if we get reopened by July 1, by the time the fair rolls around, um, that would be a very different experience for kids and yeah. fairgoers. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's uh, And everybody's planning on that. Everybody's you know, we're the whole state's moving forward all, all across the state with their fairs. In fact, San Juan County this weekend had a really well attended uh, dynamic uh, jackpot for livestock kids. And and that's what it's all about. It's just providing those opportunities for our next generation. And, and here it is with COVID. You know, the science has figured out how to get the shots. We just got to get the people to take the shots. Right. True. Very true. Thank you. Uh, Secretary Garcia Grego, let me turn back to you a little bit about uh, kind of in your department, you know, what this means if the state is able to reopen as as is projected on July 1, if everyone um, who has maybe not yet gotten their vaccine can do that this week. Um, obviously, more museums reopening, more cultural uh, areas in the state reopening, um, more opportunities for tourism and things like that. You fill in the blanks that I'm not hitting here this morning. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, you, you hit a lot of them, right? So <laughs> culture is a, is a broad concept. Culture is everything from what we eat 
what we drink, how we worship, how we dance, how we celebrate, how we mourn. So there's lots of things that we all want back in our lives and that we need from an economic standpoint. So, you know, county fairs, rodeos, powwows, music concerts, uh, exhibit openings, literary events, things that can get people, our, our creative workers have been struggling through the pandemic and, and this is an opportunity to support them by getting us back open. Um, so a lot of people, you know, have, have been missing those things in their lives and uh, we need to get over this mark on Thursday to get there. Um, people can go to vaccinenm.org if they haven't registered or if they've been delayed in getting their booster, they can go and sign up. It's it's so easy. Um, there's lots of places you can go. San Juan County is obviously doing a great job. And I just wanna be clear that that $100 incentive also applies for folks who go back to get those booster shots um, today, tomorrow, and Thursday. So you can get, you can get that $100 booster shot. Also, if you go to VAX, V-A-X, to the number two, the max, um, dot org. You can also enter for some of those bigger prizes that are giving out. So the state's giving out almost $10 million in prizes to help encourage and get us over that threshold, get our economy back open. There are great prizes. And this Friday, actually, they're going to do the first of four separate drawings for a quarter million dollars. And then in August, um, there will be a drawing for $3 million. So even if folks have already been fully vaccinated, did their civic duty, did it a long time ago, they can still go in and sign up for those prizes. So um, really encourage people to do that so we can get back to enjoying all of the great cultural events, agricultural events that we like. We can get our tourism economy started again, get our hospitality workers back to work um, and really, really start living life again. Right. And uh, and that's a great point that this is open to the Vax to the Max NM dot org website and this uh, opportunity again more incentives i guess open to anyone who's gotten the vaccine but they do have to opt in to be part of these drawings um for this um, prize money and there are a lot of other things we've talked about that on this station about um, what other things are available besides cash prizes or trips and hunting trips and other things um again to just thank i think the residents for doing their part in rolling up their sleeves and getting the vaccine to help us get back to this hopefully uh much more normal summer than than last year but uh and i would assume the folks that are getting their shots and their 100 dollars this week would also be able to opt into this Vax to the max um sweepstakes as well absolutely and and look you know we um we started vaccinating the 12 and over fairly late in the process. A lot of those are the folks that need to come back and get their booster shots. Um, if they go with their parent or guardian, the parent or guardian gets the hundred dollar as well. So to get it directly, you need to be over 18. If you're under 18, you need to bring a parent or guardian. So that's another group that, that really needs to get back in there. And it's an incentive for parents to, you know, make time in their busy schedules to get that done this week. Right. And so for both of you, let's look ahead and say that we do this and everybody who is listening to us goes out and uh, and gets their uh, their vaccine or their booster. And uh, and by July one, um, the numbers are in and we're able to um, to reopen. What does this mean for the Department of Agriculture? Uh, Secretary Witte, is that just kind of full speed ahead for for county fairs and, and other things that your department does in a normal year? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's full speed ahead. It's 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 all about. And, and the summertime is a great time to pick up your fresh fruits and vegetables at the farmers markets and and uh, roadside stands and and some of your local you, San Juan County's got a tremendous number of great roadside stands and and your farmers markets up there are phenomenal uh, without restriction it, it gives everybody the opportunity to safely go and participate in life and and that's really what this is all about is is getting back to normal and and really having that surety that that you can take part in all those good social activities that you've always had to. Of course, we're all going to have to take our precautions. We're always going to have to have, have precautions from here on out, but in a, we'll have a much safer environment to, to, to live life in. And the county fairs, the regional fairs, you, you know, you got the tri-state fair up there, the, you got the San Juan uh, fair, which is a phenomenal fair. Uh, big fair. And then we got the state fair to look forward to. These kids will have the opportunities that they missed out on last year if we get this finished. And, and July 1 is a good magic date. That gives us a whole six months, the rest of the year, to really charge forward. And that's what it's all about. 
Right. And and I know, you know, affairs are a big deal um, here and in a lot of parts of our state, maybe not so much in the metro areas, but I think it's really important for folks um, to remember that um, much of New Mexico is still a rural uh, state. And, and again, a lot of the kids that are in 4-H and FFA and all those things, um, the fairs are a big deal. And uh, they spend a lot of time, money, and effort on their animals and, and getting them ready for uh, for the fairs every every summer and to be able to yeah. do that in a normal year is a is a big change. Yeah, these are these are life lessons that these kids are learning. Responsibility, you know, when when a kid can join 4-H and and be, become involved in the FFA beginning at eight and nine years old, they learn responsibility. They learn the the financial aspects of raising livestock and buying feed and and all the other projects that are associated with it, from leather craft to to Legos and and uh, uh, Air, aircraft and different things in the 4-H opportunities that they can showcase at, this, at these fairs, their welding projects. So it's, it's not just one dimensional. There's so many life lessons that the kids are, are able to participate in. So it's really something I'm looking forward to hitting a bunch of them this fall. Very good. Well, thank you very much. And I will share and get another, uh, uh, another graphic that we borrowed from the Department of Health. It looks like we're maybe 36,000 vaccines to go, at least is that what the latest is to get us to that 60% uh, vaccination rate by June 17th for the two-week period open by July 1st is kind of what the state is saying. And so when you spread that across the state, uh, that number, that big number probably goes down fairly quickly, I would, I would hope. Yes. That is Yep, that is the goal. And so we need everybody in every community doing their part and it's very achievable. Um, but folks have got to move quickly, you know, so we can, you know, you, you were asking about what that looks for, like for the Department of Cultural Affairs, Department of Cultural Affairs, you know, our museums and historic sites are open, but they'll be open at full capacity. Our theaters, auditoriums, planetariums will be back open. We'll be able to start doing public events that people enjoy and look forward to every year. And we'll be able to get school kids and summer camp programs back into those buildings. Right now, we're, we're holding off on doing in-person education. We've, we've done a great job remotely, but there's nothing like experiencing it firsthand. Very um, true. And, and thank you for sharing that. I was going to come to you next to ask you to, for equal time for your department, too, to talk a little bit about what this means. And for the other um, state departments who aren't represented here this morning and just the other things that aren't represented here this morning. I mean, this, um, this number, the 60 percent vaccination rate, changes, I think, a lot of things in our state from sports to concerts to other other things that we would consider more of a normal type summer activity and this is how to get there yeah you're, yep. gonna, you're gonna see the return of festivals and concerts and, and a lot of different activities that you're starting to see scheduled and everybody's scheduling in anticipation of the state citizens doing what they need to do and that's get over that 60 percent number right thank you secretary garcia griego yeah, and I think, you know, in addition to that, people can, you know, get back to, to more of a normal work schedule. We can get the economy um, back up. Secretary Keyes has been done a great job over the pandemic um, recruiting businesses under very difficult circumstances. That job is going to become so much easy for her, easier for her to bring jobs and economic development to the state when we're back open. Of course, Secretary Schreier over at Tourism, the hospitality industry has been hard hit. People are definitely coming back. I see them as I move around the state. All of those protocols become easier for our hospital, or I'm sorry, our, our hospitality industry, hotels, restaurants, um, tourist attractions to operate. Um, so there's, there's multiple benefits across the state to reaching that 60% mark by Thursday. Right. And I know you, you mentioned hospitals, but I think uh, it gives our hospitals a break <laughs> maybe if we can get more folks vaccinated, right? And they're not showing up in the, uh, in the hospital with uh, problems related to maybe COVID-19. Right. And, you know, something else that we're really encouraging folks to do is to take care of their basic medical needs. You know, a yep. lot of folks have been delaying seeing their doctor over the past year. They should be doing that now, but it'll become so much easier when we get to that 60% mark as well to get back in and see your doctor and take care of your health, see your loved ones and, and feel a little bit more confident about maybe somebody that has a, a, an immune compromised system or a health condition. Um, it really is a return to everything that we love about life. Very true. Well, and as much as we appreciated the color-coded map uh, to kind of give us some guidance throughout all of this as things kind of opened and closed and cases 
fell and rose again and fell again. Um, I don't think there's too many people sad to see it go if we get to that 60% mark, which is what the plan is, correct? That's what we're going to do. We are going to do it. On, on Thursday, we're going to get to that 60% mark. There you go. Positive thinking. <laughs> Secretary Woody, again, uh, you know, this, the color-coded map, uh, we're all in turquoise, which we're thrilled to see, but to see it go away. And, uh, and for businesses and restaurant owners that don't have to worry about, are they at 75% capacity or can they go to 100% or indoors or outdoors, it certainly would be a game changer for, for a lot of these small business owners who've been just trying to keep up with uh, the latest uh, notifications. Yeah, no, absolutely. The only turquoise I like to see is the one on people's necks and, you know, on their bracelets. On oh, the jewelry, that's right. Yeah, jewelry. <laughs> and we've got some great, great jewelry up there. Very, very true. Well, we're all hopeful to get there. If I could just have you folks just remind us again, um, there is this $100 um, incentive, I guess, if you will, to, uh, to get folks to consider getting their vaccinations if they have not already. But the key is to do it this week. Um, it seems like anyone who would like a vaccine can get a vaccine, no matter what corner of the state you are in. I know San Juan County has uh, numerous um, places available. Pharmacies are doing it, local pharmacies and things like that. Um, and so it's really not a problem to get a vaccine for anyone who wants one in any corner of the state. That's right. Yeah, no, it, this is the opportunity. Seize the opportunity. The 100 bucks is there for the taking. You know, and if you're, if you're a business and you've got a large number of employees who need a uh, vaccine, contact us. Contact Department of Health. Contact either one of us and we'll set you up. We'll help you get set up with a local clinic at your own facility so that you can do it easy. Very good. And uh, Secretary Garcia Griego, um, again, this $100 is available even uh, if, to the parent if it's, a, if it's a minor who's coming in to get their vaccine? Absolutely. It's available to anybody that comes in and gets the Johnson & Johnson vaccine through Thursday or gets their booster through Thursday. And you can schedule your appointment at vaccinenm.org and you can register for all those other great prizes, including up to $3 million of cash at vaxtothemaxnm.org. Backs to the max nm.org. Thank you. Yes, and that's for everybody who has gotten the vaccine, who wants to opt in to uh, to be part of these. And the drawings are going to start this week, I believe you said, and will continue over the next few weeks um, because there's a lot of money um, to be given away and prizes. That's that's correct. The quarter they will be giving away four quarter million dollar prizes on Friday afternoon. And this is not something unique to New Mexico. Other states have done this, the sweepstakes types, type of an idea. And I think a lot of states are just trying, again, there's been maybe some vaccine hesitancy among some residents who wanted to wait or talk to their doctor, which is always good advice to, to ask, you know, if the vaccine is right for them or the chance of catching COVID would be worse for them if they have other health care conditions and health conditions and things like that. Um, and so it's nothing that the, the state is doing that other states aren't doing, I guess is my, my question we're in the same boat. A lot of other states are doing these sweepstakes uh, things. That is correct, yes. Uh, I think Ohio went first, and, and we're one of several states that are running these to encourage citizens and, and to thank them, to thank those who stepped up early on and, and really got the vaccine and got the ball rolling. Very true. Thank you. Well, very good. And uh, Secretary Woody, I guess the final thoughts from, from you and from the Department of Agriculture this morning as we look at this uh, I guess kind of deadline, if you will, of the 17th to try to get folks uh, in to, to get vaccines, to get that two-week waiting period, which takes us to July 1. That's kind of the magic, uh, the magic date, as we've heard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, take advantage of this opportunity. You know, get over the, let's get New Mexico over the hump. Let's get out and enjoy what's good about New Mexico, the, the weather, the culture, you know, all the good things that there are. And this provides us that opportunity. So, so let's get her done. Take the challenge. There you go. Thank you. And uh, Secretary Garcia Griego, final thoughts from you, please, this morning. Well, I really can't top Secretary Witte, but echo everything he said. Yeah, let's, let's get our economy back open. Let's get our lives back on track. Um, we can do this together. Get out there. Get it done this week. Very good. Well, I appreciate both of you joining me this morning. Uh, thank you for putting up with our, our technical um, limitations at the beginning, but we made it work. And it's great to see both of you. So thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you Take care. Time.
Thank you. You're very welcome. My guest this morning here on KSJE is Secretary Deborah Garcia Griego from the Mexico Department of Cultural Affairs and Secretary Jeff Woody from the State Department of Agriculture. Back with more in just a moment, everyone. This is KSJE. Did you enjoy that podcast? We hope that you did. And if you did, share it with your friends. And if you really want to keep podcasts like this coming, please support KSJE. You can do it easily online at ksje.com.